Welcome back to Linear Algebra. In this video, we're going to review linearly independent sets, and we're going to introduce the concept of a basis. So, a linearly independent set is a set of vectors such that the linear combination of vectors equal to zero has only the trivial solution. So, of course, this is where c1 is equal to c2 is equal to all the way up to cp, and these are all equal to zero. So all of the scalars are equal to zero. So we're going to do some questions with polynomials here. So we have the first polynomial is equal to 2, second polynomial is equal to 2t, and the third polynomial is equal to 8 minus 2t, and we're asked, is the set of these three linearly independent? So uh, more specifically, we can write it like this. So we can say that p1 is equal to 2, 0, p2 is equal to 0, 2, and then p3 is going to be equal to 8 and negative 2. Well, if we write it like this, we can clearly see that, uh, no, these are not linearly independent because there is only two entries in each vector, and we have three vectors, and we see that we can write p3 as 4p1 minus p2. So no, this set is going to be lin linearly dependent. If we want to make it linearly independent, we can just take out p3 and we're good. Okay, so it's a quick review of linear independence. So now we'll introduce the basis. So we're gonna say let h be a subspace of a vector space b. Then we say b, which is the basis containing vectors b1 through bp in v, is a basis for h if, first, b is linearly independent, so the set we have for our basis is linearly independent, and the basis is going to span all of the subspace. So, for instance, if we have these unit vectors e1, e2, and e3, this is called the standard basis for R3. So if you remember these ones, they're 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So these satisfy the two conditions. First, they're all linearly independent, and they span all of R3. So if we wrote this in a coordinate system, so we can write it like this, Essentially, we have a vector that is one unit to the right, we have a vector that's one unit up, and then we have a vector that's one unit in and out of the screen. Okay, so for polynomials, we also have a different standard basis. So again, this is very similar to our previous uh, standard base for R3. So we have one, zero, 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 that's what 1 corresponds to, t corresponds to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and of course, so on and so forth. But again, this is linearly independent, and it's going to span all of P4. Okay, so with that, we can check. So if we're given a set of three vectors, we can ask, is that a basis for R3? And I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, hey, we have the standard basis. Why do we need any more uh, bases? Why do we need to pick a different set of vectors for a basis? Well, in some cases it might be easier to talk about certain points, but uh, we'll hold that off for just a second here. So let's determine if this is a basis. So we need to check is it linearly independent and does it span all of our three? So how do we do that? Well, we can put this into a matrix and we can solve. So it's going to be 3, 1, negative 4, and negative 2, negative 1, 1. Let's reduce this. So the first and second rows are going to be okay. It's going to be 0, 1, negative 1. And then we're going to add 3 of the first row to the third row. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 4 plus 9 is 5. Uh, 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. Okay. Oh, we see something here. We see that the second and third row are just multiples of each other. So let's reduce this further. So now we're going to have 1, 3, negative 2, 0, 1, negative 1, and the last one is full of zeros. So 
What this means is if we have, uh, let's call these V1, V2, and V3, we can see that these are not linearly independent. In fact, we can rewrite V3 as equal to V1 minus V2. So this is not a basis because it does not span all of R3. Okay. So what if we're asked to find a basis for a set of vectors in R2 that are on the line y equals 5x? So let's draw this visually. Okay. So what does the line y equals 5x look like? Well, we have a point here. Um, go 1 to 5, 2 and 10. So if we just draw some points so I can make this as straight as I can, this is what the line looks like. So this is y equals 5x. And I want to find a set of vectors that will produce uh, essentially the entire line. So it will span y equals 5x, and it will be linearly independent. So this is a line, which means that we can just take a vector, say 1, 5, which makes sense, right? Because why don't we just take the vector x, y? And, well, any multiple of the vector 1, 5 will be on this line. And it's going to be linearly independent because it's a set of one vector, therefore it's good. So we can take, okay, we can take that the new basis is just going to be, ooh, that's not how we do this B, we do B like that. It's the vector containing 1, 5. So let's think about this. If we want to talk just about points on this line, why not just use this basis? So instead of writing, uh, say, 210 as like a combination of x's and y's, we could just say, oh yeah, that's just two times uh, the unit vector in this basis. So instead of talking about, okay, another way we could say this is 2e1 plus 10 times e2, that's not really quite efficient. So if we're just talking about things on this line, we could use a new basis to rewrite it simpler. And in computations, this may be easier and quicker for computers. Uh, thinking about things abstractly, this might be easier. In uh, computational geometry, again, this might be a better way to look at things. So essentially, if we're given a plane R2, we could do the plane in two ways. We could think of it, well, there's many more ways than two, but just two ways I'll demonstrate. We can think of it with a standard basis, which is a grid like this, where you either go one to the right or one up. Or we could pick a different basis, and we could think of points in R2 more like this. So that's another way of thinking. So if we have vectors like this, well, we can still get to all the points, but perhaps when we want to talk about things on the diagonals or everything is a diagonal major, or a diagonal vector in our plane, then maybe this would be a better opportunity. So uh, that's it for introduction to bases. Uh, next time we'll talk about the spanning set theorem. So be sure to check that out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.